your first look at high school football scores and highlights. This is First Down Friday Night with the WZDX Sports Team. Sponsored by Zaxby's. And we are in attendance again for another edition of First Down Friday Night. And with the chill in the air, who can't be excited about high school football around the Tennessee Valley? I'm Mo Carter, and she is Kayla Carlisle. Yeah, the cool temperatures were definitely a good thing. I know a lot of the teams were definitely feeling that good temperature today as they were fighting for a playoff position in Week 7 of the high school football season. Absolutely. Now, we've got lots of games coming up tonight for you. You can also check out all of the scores scrolling on our ticker. We'll start off tonight in Class 7A. Last week's Bartman knocked off Austin from the realms of the unbeaten and jumped into a tie atop their 7A Region 4 standing. Now awaiting Sparkman tonight was Bob Jones. The Patriots trying to play spoiler tonight at Madison City School Stadium. We'll pick things up with a crazy sequence, Kayla. This pass by Sparkman's Nick Sawyer is tipped and intercepted by Trey nice. Lockhart. And the guy who rocks the same number that I wore in college picks up some nice yardage for the Patriots to go the other way. But the very next play, Slate Alford throws it in the flat, but guess what? He throws it to the wrong team. He is picked off by Joe Fortson on this one. So two interceptions in two plays. And you know Coach Kevin Rose is not a happy camper about that one. So Sparkman on the move once again. Sawyer handed off to Tavion Rupert. He gets across the goal line before he loses his helmet, Gala. Sparkman was up 20 to 7 at that point. Let's check out your score in this one at Sparkman. Pulls off another victory. They go on to win 27 to 14. Now next week, Sparkman will take on James Clemens in a very big game for the outright lead in the region, while Bob Jones will travel over to Austin. Yes. Now, speaking of James Clemens, they were in action last night at Milton Frank Stadium. Now, of course, they are the other undefeated team in that region. We'll pick things up for Grissom. Their quarterback, Jacob Foss, connects with Elijah Johnson for the very nice pickup right here. Unfortunately for the Tigers, that was one of the best plays of the night. In punt formation, Ricardo Zimmerman mishandles the snap, and the Jets recover the ball well inside of Tiger territory. Well, that would turn into this, the run by Tyreek Walker on the end of the round, and he's going to find pay dirt right here for the first touchdown. Extra point was good. The Jets soar to a 7 to nothing lead. Let's go to the beginning of the second quarter. Just putting together a very, very good drive. They hand it off to Dylan Blackburn, and this guy picks up some great yardage in the first down. Then, here's a quick pass to Dante Snodgrass. He gets to the hair of the end zone. But guess what? The Jets on the very next play, they push it over the goal line for another score. James Clemens goes on to trounce Grissom by final of 63 to nothing. Next week, as we talked about, James Clemens and Sparkman for the outright lead in the region. Grissom, they'll take on Florence. Let's tell you about another game as well in that region as Austin went on to win by final 45 to 16. Um, of course, as we mentioned, Austin's kind of playing the waiting game now in this one. But next week, Austin will host Bob Jones while Huntsville travels over to Gaston City. Kayla, now I'm going to send it to you. <laughs> I'm back again. All right, two of the hottest teams in North Alabama squared off tonight in Gurley. This game was a big one as Madison Academy, the fifth ranked team in Class 5A, traveled to face Madison County. The winner takes over the top spot in the Class 5A Region 8 championship series. Let's go ahead and get into these highlights real quick. We're going to go early in the first. QB Austin Mills hands the ball off to running back Mecky Burdett, and the former first down Friday night MVP of the week picks up a nice gain. Three plays later, Austin Mills hits Quamaine Gamble excuse me, on the post route for the easy score. Tigers go up 7-0. He can't be touched, Mo. No, and of course, not. you know, the band. Look at him. He goes up to the student section in the band doing what they do best. They pump up the crowd in this whole situation. I love when the student sections are in the I end do zone. too. I just that's gotta be a good feeling when you can run up, right up to them. But the next possession, Avery Seaton, another former MVP of the week, is pressured in the pocket. He tries to go deep. He's gonna get picked off by Gamble. Tigers now have great field position. But a few plays later, Austin Mills, he's gonna go deep down the sideline with two open receivers and gamble. Hauls it in for the second touchdown of the evening. Tigers go up 14 0. How do two wide receivers get wide over behind a defense? <laughs> right, you can't ask for anything more than Absolutely. that, right? Absolutely. Madison County's woes continue, though, as Avery Seaton is again picked off. Ball pops right up, and this time it's by Ramiro Towers. He tries to run, but he gets taken down. But no problem, because it's going to lead to another Austin touchdown pass. Check this one out. This one goes to Emmanuel Fletcher, and our camera person also was knocked out in the process. I'm sure they were just fine. Hopefully, Madison County, though, goes up 21-0 in the second. But let's go and check out the final score of that game. It looks like 
Madison County goes on to win 49 to 21 next week. Madison County travels to Arab Madison Academy goes to Scottsboro. We've got an interesting scenario now between County Academy and Scottsboro. That's we'll a, talk about that next week. A lot of Madison in that too. But let's go ahead and check out Brawley Stadium. Florence hosting Gadsden City. Fourth quarter Falcons up 17 to 3 on the Titans until Demarcus Macon hits Shikari Embry over the middle and Embry takes it in for a 43 yard score. That makes it 17 to 10 and Florence is still up. Now Falcons need a play and they go with their playmaker on this one. D Beckwith is going to get the ball and he calls his own number. D Beckwith, a phenomenal athlete. He goes right into the end zone. You think he gets taken down though. No, he doesn't get taken down. But he keeps going into the end zone like it's nothing. He breaks multiple tackles and route to a 35 yard touchdown. But let's go and check out the final score of that game. Florence goes on to win by a final of 24 to 10 next week. Lawrence is at Grissom. Gadsden City takes on Huntsville. Of course, everyone, you know that we are on social media. Check us out at Mo Carter WZDX on Twitter, at Kayla WZDX on Twitter. And we can't forget about Charity Chambers, who's out on assignment. She's at Charity WZDX. Shoot us a tweet. We may read it out loud on air. Yeah, guys, but don't go anywhere. There's plenty more football action coming your way after the break. You check out our handful of more schools. Plus, we'll show you who's taking home our spirit of the week. We'll be right back. I'm an accountant, and during tax season, I rarely see my husband and kids. So I was surprised when our friends at Evadian Credit Union arranged for dinner with my family at my office. That's Evadian. They make you feel special. So, how are your classes going at Calhoun? Great. I'm glad I stopped putting it off. I didn't know they had pre-engineering and graphic design. I know. Soon I'll be a physical therapist assistant. They have all that at Calhoun? <laughs> Yes, they have electrical too, huh? Yeah, Dad, they do. An associate's degree only takes two years. An electrical certification only takes a few months. When did you say those classes start? Calhoun Community College. Register now. Addiction is never just one person's problem. It affects everyone around you, especially your family. They're suffering too. But you can all get the help you need by calling Bradford now. Bradford has been helping adults and adolescents overcome drinking and drug problems for more than 30 years with proven treatment that's affordable, confidential, and only a phone call away. James, what brought you to Budget Breaks? Uh, definitely need an alignment. They have the best deal in town. James, at Budget Breaks, we call it alignment. It's different from what I'm talking about. My car was pulling to the right, and they got it straightened out. So your path was crooked, and now you are aligned. <laughs> Cracking me up, man. You have provided a shiny example for all of us to follow. Visit BudgetBreaks.com. Budget Breaks. Breaks starting at $89.99. Alignment starting at just $59.99. Alignment. Since 1901, Buffalo Rock Company has been an iconic part of the beverage industry. Started by the Lee family in Birmingham, Alabama. And today there are nine Pepsi-Cola distribution centers located right here in Alabama, employing over 2,100 neighbors and serving over 6.5 million people. So the next time you're looking for a nice cold drink, buy Alabama first with Pepsi-Cola, a southern original from the Buffalo Rock Company. Alabama works when you buy Alabama first. I'm an accountant, and during tax season, I rarely see my husband and kids. So I was surprised when our friends at Evadian Credit Union arranged for dinner with my family at my office. That's Evadian. They make you feel special. Need more sports? Check out 97.7 The Zone. Now back to the action on First Down Friday night. And welcome back, boys and girls. It's now time for our Spirit of the Week. Yeah, a segment where we show some love to the bands and fans who show up and show out on Friday nights. Absolutely. This week's winner goes to the marching band over at Fort Payne. Now, Fort Payne, they're under the direction of band director Ian Trask. The drum major is Ricardo Gonzalez. This year's field show features classic hits from the supergroup Queen. The hits include Don't Stop Me Now, We Will Rock You, and Bohemian Rhapsody. Tomorrow, the band will participate in the Jacksonville State Contest of Champions, and in upcoming weeks, they'll travel to the Peach Day Band Festival, which is over in Rome, Georgia. So now that this segment has bit the dust, Kayla, I'll send it over to you.
All right, back to some football now. Last night, Danville hosted their second matchup with DAR, a team that's only won two wins, or who only, has, who only has, excuse me, two wins under their belt this season last year. Danville lost this game, so let's go and see how they fared last night. In the uh, the Hawks are leading Region 7 right now with four wins and three losses, so a win to last night would keep them up front. Let's go into the first quarter, though. Patriots with the ball. Justin Stubblefield looking for someone, and it looks like he finds that someone. It's Martius Leonard who catches it in the end zone. Score sits at 7-0. Hawks have an answer, though. Luke Nail makes a pass down the middle to Ethan Sapp, and he's out of here. No one is around him. No one's no going to touch him. <laughs> nope, and the Hawks tie it up at 7 apiece. So now we take it into the second quarter. Nail with the snap, but he's going to get picked off by the Patriots, and Leonard makes a good run, and he gets a first down. The Hawks, though, are ready to return the favor. Stubblefield feeling the pressure. He rolls out, and he goes for the pass, but it gets intercepted by Moore. He walks it right out of bounds right there, but the Hawks are going to take advantage of this one. They get into scoring position, and Nail pops it over to Moore for the score. Danville takes the lead 14 to 7. But let's go and check out the final score of that matchup. Danville goes on to win with a high scoring affair of 42 to 33 next week. Danville versus St. John Paul. DAR hosts Priceville. All right, another game in that region featuring St. John Paul and Randolph. Out of the green smoke come the Falcons. They're led by our current first down Friday night MVP of the week, Seth Brown. Now, most times, Kayla, I say, what can Seth Brown do for you? And that's throw touchdowns. But right here, he's got the razzle-dazzle. Look at him. Just put on the afterburners, juke a bunch of people, and he still has it going down. Stiff arms the guy. Eventually picks up 30 yards and gets them down to the red zone. That would set up this. Angelo Hunter takes a handoff right up the middle, and he won't be denied the end zone. Touchdown, Falcons. They're on top, seven to nothing. Now, Randolph, they would drive the length of the field on their first drive, but facing fourth and goal, they go for it. Nick Strong takes the handoff, but that Falcons defense is stronger. They stop him on the two yard line. St. John Paul will take over. Fast forward to the second quarter. Falcons on the offensive. Hey, Kayla, what can Brown do for you? I hope it's a touchdown, though. Absolutely. He throws a touchdown pass to Brian Moss wide open right there 14 to nothing at that point let's check out your final score in this one and the Falcons roll to another victory by this time by final 48 to 13 next week St. John Paul's got a big one against Danville while Randolph will take on Fairview all right everyone oh, we've got an impressive varsity game of the night which included some very nice pink jersey for a very great cause stay tuned for that which is next Good news, it's back. Frosted tips. Absurdly large shoulder pads. Saying tap to the hand. No, the sensation's back at Zaxby's. Oh. The Zensation Salad is back and introducing the new Zensation Filet Sandwich Meal with hand-breaded chicken, Asian slaw, wonton strips, and citrus vinaigrette. Both served with an egg roll. The Zensation Salad and Filet Sandwich Meal, only at Zaxby's. Tired of struggling with regular mirrors that don't adjust so you can't get close enough? You need Flexible Mirror, the bendable, light-up magnification mirror that comes to you. Just stick it on and turn the base. The super suction locking mechanism means you can put it on any smooth-surfaced place. Lock it onto any mirror, table, or desk, even on a window. The secret is Flexible Mirror's super strong articulating arm that's attached with an ingenious ball and socket so it can swivel and rotate for the perfect angle. The mirror is precision crafted with 10 times magnification and crystal clear optics. You can get flexible mirror for the special TV discount price of just $19.99. It comes with our 90 day no questions asked money back guarantee. And we give you free shipping on your entire order. Here's how to order. To order call 1-800-329-6934. That's 1-800-329-6934. Or order online at tryflexiblemirror.com. Wish we could afford to buy new furniture. <gasps> what is this? It's your breakthrough from Cons Home Plus. Cons Low Payment Finder finds the lowest payment tailored to you. Good credit or building credit. Wow! And now, during Cashbacktober, get up to $500 cash back on your furniture purchase, plus an additional $200 cash back when you combine it with a TV. And get Cashbacktober offers store-wide all month long. We are the dreamers. We changed the world. Because we don't give up. 
IU can help you live your dream. IU is an online college, so your campus is wherever you want it to be. Take classes when you want to take classes. You receive the tools you need at no extra cost. Even a brand new laptop and tablet to use in school. Call IU, then tell them your dream. 1-800-651-7521. 1-800-651-7521. WZDX Sports Extra, Sunday night at 10, only on WZDX. some of those scores, I just see a lot of offensive numbers. Five, man. Yeah, five just keeps on rolling. Those scores. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All right, everyone. Well, this was a very special night over at Hazel Green for two teams in the Tennessee Valley. As Hazel Green's head coach, Joe Shrink, decided to pay it forward to the Trojans opponent, Mae Jemison. Yeah, one Jaguar coach has been dealing with a cancer diagnosis, but not for himself or his one-year-old daughter. Now the Trojans are looking to raise money to help out a fellow football family. So in honor of Young Kinsley, tonight's game was designated the Pink Out Game. Each Hazel Green player wore a pink jersey with the name of someone they know who has been affected by cancer on the back. Before the game, each player honored the person they recognized while also bringing awareness to the deadly disease. The school also had a handful of fundraisers throughout the night that benefited St. Jude's Hospital. Coach Schrank says that the idea is something he's done for a while now. So even though we're in a pink jersey, it's not just breast cancer. It's whatever. Pink is just kind of what everybody associates with it and so um, on our helmets we have the gold ribbon which is pediatric cancer which is Kinsley so that's pretty cool we've had that on now for a couple weeks. And the lesson is life is more than about us and it's more than about football so let's help people along the way. And that was also our varsity game of the night. Now great turnout for tonight's event and there's a young Kinsley the star of the show tonight she was named the captain of the game. Oh, now, cool. Like we said, the entire Hazel Green team was recognized with their loved ones and even a couple of the players took that opportunity to honor Kinsley. We were also told that there will be a similar fundraising event going on next week at Albertville, so we'll be trying to keep you updated with that. But with all that being said, there was still a football game to be played tonight, so let's get into it. Hazel Green hosting May Jemison and things not looking pretty for the Trojans early on. First quarter, Jaguars with the ball and it's fourth and 12. They decide this is a good time to capitalize. Plazarius Tanner gets a hold of the ball and finesses his way around some Trojans to get a first down. Very next play, though, Damon Eason hands it off to Christian Wimberly, and he's in the end zone with ease. Jaguars go up 7-0. Trojans with the ball now, and they just can't seem to make a play happen. Mo, first Patrick Mahoney gets sacked. Oh, no. And then the next play, he tries to go for a pass, but it would be incomplete. So he's just not making any traction on the field tonight. Still in the first, though, Jaguars ready to make it hurt. Eason. Hands it off to Wembley again. And Mo, I think I'm having deja vu because the Jaguars score one more time. Extra point would be good. They go up 14 0. Same Let's kind of play call on that one. I know. Let's go ahead and check out your uh, score right there in the fourth. 42 to 21. May Jemison was up. So. We'll make sure to get the final score about up soon. Absolutely. All right, let's stay in that region. Alberville playing host to Lee. We'll pick things up in the first quarter. Alberville, they've got a quarterback by the name of Hayden Mann, and on this play, he is a man as he calls his own number, barrels over the defender, and gets into the end zone for a score. Aggies go up seven to nothing. But the Lee Generals trying to respond. Their quarterback will go deep down the field to the 20 yard line, and it'll be caught by Jonathan Vickers. But are the Generals feeling the momentum is the big question. That that will settle a field goal, but it's blocked by the Aggies, and they recover and try to run it back. Bad situation for the Lee Generals. You knew for sure that that was going to be a turning point if they were not able to get some points on the board. Now, second and 16. How about that guy whose last name is Man? And he calls his own number, cuts across the field, and just like Mike Gundy, I'm a man as Man goes into the end zone for a score right there. He could not be stopped on that play. Let's check out your final score. Alberville goes on to win by a final of 49 to 28 over the Lee Generals next week. Alberville will take on May Jemison, while Lee will take on Buckhorn. Stay tuned for more First Down Friday Night, which is coming up next.
Attention all women who have been diagnosed with ovarian cancer. In February 2016, a manufacturer of talcum powder was ordered to pay $72 million by a jury to a woman who died of ovarian cancer after 35 years of using the manufacturer's talc-based products. Multiple studies show that women who have long-term use of talcum powder in products such as baby powder or feminine hygiene can increase the risk of contracting ovarian cancer. If you or a family member have been diagnosed with ovarian cancer and used talcum powder prior to the diagnosis, call Talcum Powder Alert today. You may be entitled to substantial compensation. The consultation is free and you'll pay nothing unless there is a recovery in your favor. So if you or a loved one used talcum powder based products before being diagnosed with or died from ovarian cancer, make the call today. Please call 800-660-1494. That is 800-660-1494. Do you know what your child is doing online? WZDX knows that protecting children is a top priority. Dangerous online predators pose a very real threat to our young people. But together, we can help protect them. The CyberSafe Parent Program from Redstone Federal Credit Union, SAIC, and WZDX is your resource to combat online threats. Look for special features on WZDX News and visit RocketCityNow.com to learn more about keeping your family cyber safe. I'm Officer Scott Savitt, and this is CopCam, a wireless security camera smaller than one square inch, so you can hide it anywhere to record anything, anytime motion is detected. CopCam shoots in incredible high definition and includes a powerful microphone to record perfect audio. With a motion sensor, it only records when it needs to. Then simply upload to your computer. Call now, and you can get CopCam for only two easy payments of $19.99. Order now, and we'll upgrade you to our CopCam Elite with six built-in infrared LEDs to record even at night. We'll also send you our swivel clip to turn your cop cam into the best dash cam, body cam, or action sports cam. And it's free. And finally, an 8 gigabyte memory card. Also free. Call or click now and you can double the offer. Just pay a separate fee. You can get all this, but you have to order now. Call 1-800-944-3589 or visit bycopcam.com. So call 1-800-944-3589 now. <laughs> Catch my latest pinpoint weather forecast on the go. Download the WZDX weather app today. Hey guys, I'm here in Fort Worth, Texas, en route to the Alabama versus Texas A&M game happening down in College Station, Texas, my old stomping grounds. Now make sure you tune in right here to WZDX throughout the weekend because we're going to keep you covered on Saturday night. Tune in to WZDX after the baseball game and then on Sunday night, tune in to WZDX Sports Extra at 10 p.m. We're going to be bringing you highlights and a recap. No, I'm sure Charity's excited about that game, but we're going to go ahead and wrap things up with two Thursday night games. First, Muscle Shoals hosting Coleman. Trouble starts early for the Wildcats. There's a high snap on the punt, and Coleman punters, punter is tackled for a huge loss. Trojans take over with great field position. And Logan Smothers, he's going to go to work. Trojans up 7-0, has all the time in the world. He throws it deep to Ty Smith for a 28-yard touchdown, and they go up 14-0. Nice placement of that ball. Absolutely. Now Smothers threw for 221 yards and three touchdowns. The third one coming right here on a fade route to Mike McIntosh. Trojans cruise in this one. Let's check out your final score of that game. Looks like uh, the Fort Payne goes on to win this one. Oh, excuse me, Muscle Shoals goes to win this one 45 to nothing. A complete shutout, Mo. Absolutely. Next week, Muscle Shoals got a big game against Athens for the lead in the region. You mentioned Fort Payne. They were at Buckhorn last night under the lights of uh, Thomas Ledbetter Stadium. 
Bucks were up seven to nothing, but the Wildcats knocking on the door. Hunter Love bust through that door and into the end zone for a Fort Payne touchdown. Seven to seven. We got a tied ball game on our hand. Love had 209 yards and three scores. In the second quarter, ball game is tied. John David Blaylock airs it out to corner pinholster. He hauls it in for a Fort Payne touchdown. Wildcats now up 14 to seven. In the second half, Fort Payne puts together a 10 minute drive. It culminates with another Hunter Love touchdown, 21 to seven at that point. Buckhorn finally getting the offense going though in the second half, like latter portions of the third quarter. Their quarterback, Brandon McNeil, will find Riley Irwin in the flats. He shakes a tackle and he is off to the races. 78 yards for a touchdown, Kayla. McNeil, 270 on the night. Buckhorn scores 21 points in the second half and we're going to overtime. In the extra period, Buckhorn leads 35 to 34. Fort Payne going for two, and this is your ball game. Hunter Love barrels his way across the goal line for a score, and Fort Payne marches into Buckhorn last night and wins by a final of 36 to 35. With the victory, they have assured themselves at least a share of the region championship. Great game last night between the Wildcats and the Buck. Next week, Fort Payne will take on Hazel Green while Buckhorn will take on Lee. Wow, All right. Tight game that was. Absolutely. Very, very tight game. Let's move over to this. We'd like to acknowledge our week six first down Friday night MVP of the week. And it goes to St. John Paul quarterback Seth Brown. Yeah, the Falcons quarterback had a performance that put him in the HSAA record books. Charity Chambers has more on Brown. It makes us look a little better than we probably are. Uh, he gets us out of trouble, and uh, you know he's a great leader for our team, and our guys rally behind him, and, uh, and they follow him every night, and he's, he's a warrior back there. St. John Paul II set the Brown may be small in size, but his game is far from it. This past week against West Morgan, Seth scored seven total touchdowns, five through the air and two on the ground. We've seen him play really good games before, and I think this was probably his most complete game as a quarterback. Uh, he threw completions to seven different receivers, so we spread the ball around really well. Um, Sean Zarco had another game like he's been having. Uh, Angelo Hunter had a big performance from receiving. Um, but we always know what Seth's potential is, and uh, he just did a good job. Uh, he trusts what he saw out there. He trusts his reads. He trusts his teammates, and he, he went and had another good game. Seth passed for 520 yards and rushed for 94, helping lead his team to a 49 to 36 victory over the Rebels. Well, they said they were going to play our receivers straight up, and that means that we just go to work and let my receivers do the magic. Our team is full of playmakers, so whenever I get the ball in their hands, that they can do whatever they want and uh, score a touchdown with it. Congratulations to Seth. Now, nominations are open for the next First Down Friday Night MVP of the Week. If you think you know a deserving athlete for our First Down MVP award, what do you do? You got to just send us an email at news at rocketcitynow.com with the player's name, school, position, and Mo, they cannot forget the stats from their last game. That is a big deal. Make sure you send those stats. Absolutely. We want to know what the person did last week. It, it's helpful. Right, right, <laughs> right, right. All right, everyone. So, of course, we've now on past the halfway point of the edge to say football season, which means that we got some very important battles coming up, including next week. We've got that Sparkman James Clemens game. We've Good got game. Athens versus Muscle Shoals. Those two games will definitely determine who the leader in the region is going to be. And we'll have it all right here on WZDX first down Friday night for Kayla Carlisle and Charity Chambers. I'm Mo Carter. Have a great weekend. We will see you guys next week on first down Friday night. You've been watching First Down Friday Night, sponsored by Zaxby's.